There's no turning back now. They have gone to the point of no return. The central banks have now guaranteed that the economic collapse will not be anywhere near as light as it could have been. Had they allowed certain companies to fail, had they allowed certain stocks to fall, had they simply stepped out of their constant intervention, we wouldn't have had this mess, but they did. And they are doing this not for your benefit, but to exert control over the system. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. This is really the key point that I want to make because all the time people believe that the Federal Reserve is actually trying to support the system because they don't want to see it fail. But the system doesn't fail in a way that everybody loses control. They always have control even when they seem like they are out of control. They create the crises. Look at what happened in 2008. Look at what happened in all the previous crises before that. They were there. They were present. They were pumping money in. They were doing everything that they have been able to do all this time, manipulating in one way, shape, or form, creating new facilities, lowering interest rates. Today, yes, they have gone to new territory, but every single time they go into new territory, this one is just shocking. I'm going to show you the examples of what they have been doing recently. They've expanded their balance sheet at such a rate that we have never seen anything like this before. I'm going to show you what's going on with the economy as well, the jobs situation and so much more let's begin Weekly jobless claims total 2.9 million, bringing the tally to 36.5 million. This is an extremely high number, especially when you consider that there are an additional 8 million people that were not counted last week. I don't know if any of them started to end up on this week's numbers. My guess is that they are not. I cannot officially confirm that the 8 million are added upon this. If that was the case, of course, we're going well into 40 million plus, and I do believe that that is the case, but I cannot confirm it as of this moment, so I'm going to leave that out. But based on the way that they're doing this calculation, I really think that that's what we're at right now. That doesn't even count the people that are underemployed. We're not looking at all of the real deal facts, but this is coming directly from the government themselves. They bring us this information and it's so shocking but don't worry because everything's gonna be a okay v shaped recovery right well now we're starting to hear about the w shaped recovery we heard about the u shaped recovery some say it will be an l shaped recovery i don't know maybe a seven shaped recovery maybe it'll be an o shaped recovery what other letters of the alphabet should we use here i can go all day maybe a hashtag shaped recovery maybe maybe an exclamation point shape recovery. How much more time can we waste on this? It's stupid. It's stupid. Let's move on. Fed's balance sheet nears $7 trillion mark. This is ridiculous, especially when you read the subtitle. It says Fed's balance sheet expansion may be slowing. There is nothing in here that's going slow. I'll show you it directly from the Fed's own website. And while we haven't seen the growth that was present, let's say a few weeks ago, come on, look at this. We are now at nearly $7 trillion. You can't say it's slowing. But when you look at it on a deeper level, you look at the individual elements which make up the total balance sheet and certainly some of them haven't grown the way they did before but come on look at this don't try and make it seem softer than what it is don't do what you do with the jobs numbers the media is completely complicit in all of this and of course they do this the algorithms pick that up the traders love it the financial analysts are so stupid most of the time and it's unbelievable this is a self fulfilling prophecy they're constantly feeding it to each other it's disgusting and i'm tired of it Fed buys $305 million of ETFs at launch of historic program. So here they are going into the markets and they are buying ETFs. They have never done this before. So this is a new program, always going into new territory. I've been talking about this here on the channel. I'm sure you've been aware of it. This basically goes to a new level, not just with their balance sheet, but of course the activities that they're doing. They're using their friends at BlackRock to actually make this happen. And who gets the benefit from that? Of course, BlackRock is so kind to help out. Just like we saw the big banks facilitating the transfers of the payments to the small businesses, profiting billions of dollars in a matter of days. 
History made. Looks like the Fed made good on word as LQD and HYG both saw volume jump today via some sizable trades midday. No, we didn't know for sure if it was them, but given what they said yesterday and non-corp bond ETFs like AGG and TLT didn't see a similar jump, there's a good chance in my opinion. To translate that for those who don't know what this means, essentially that they went in, they bought the ETF, specifically you're looking at LQD QD and HYG. These are the ones where they have been buying up. And then you see the others in the market, which the Federal Reserve isn't buying up. And those didn't do as well. They didn't perform as well. So when you have the buyer in the market, the buyer of last resort, the Federal Reserve, they're buying up something. Don't you think other traders are also buying it as well? Of course, BlackRock's probably in there too. There's no real stipulation that they don't have to, as far as I'm aware. They could do whatever they want as long as it's outside of the terms of what they're doing for the Federal Reserve. They are an investment company. They can transact and do whatever they need to. There is no market anymore. If you thought there was a free market, it's gone. I always show you the information directly from the Federal Reserve. You get a lot of this information. It comes through CNBC articles. You hear people talking about it. You see the talking heads, whether it's on the mainstream media or the alternative media. They tell you the information. But here at the Money GPS, I always give it to you directly from the source. This is the federalreserve.gov website, and you could see it here for yourself. I always just want to make it clear so that you have the proof. Link in description if you want it. But essentially what we're looking at is $305 million. Now, while million is not really a significant number, it seems, we're talking about something historic right now. And this is in a matter of a week. So a $300 million increase here going from zero is actually quite significant. You can look at all of the other programs are here as well. You can see what they've been buying. You can see what they're up to. It's broken down here in this chart. And for those who want to know a little bit more detail, Detail, highly recommend pause the video or you can go to the link in the description but it's the same total I saw showed you from the uh, st. Louis Fed website 6.9 trillion and change this just gives you the breakdown if you're interested Fed's Mester sees a recovery or a much more dire scenario as equally possible. Here's what she said. So right now we're in a situation where we really want to make sure that we're doing all we can, certainly at the Fed with our tools to make sure that the economy is in the best position as it can possibly be when the recovery starts and we see an increase in activity. So they just basically want to pump as much money as they possibly can, lend as much money out through different programs. They want to have interest rates at the absolute rock bottom so that everything is fine when the economy hits the bottom and it can resurface right now we're not there we know that because the amount of people that are unemployed continues to grow and I don't know if I have it up on the screen anywhere here at this point but I have confirmed that there is still a backlog of all the people that have applied and have not been processed at the same time I have heard from so many people that have told me they tried to apply and for whatever reason technical difficulties or something else they are unable to so for those two reasons the number I believe is probably, and I'm being very conservative here, is probably 50 million unemployed. And those are official unemployed numbers. Then you add on top people that are underemployed and so on. This really wouldn't surprise me to see 50 million as the true rate of unemployed. And I'm talking U3 unemployed. And I'm not even looking at U6 or any of that other data that goes further, which I believe is actually more accurate. And then of course, they start talking about negative interest rates. And she said, I don't ever like to rule anything out at this point. There's no discussion about it. It's not something I support at this time. But if the economy continued to crater, what do you think they would do with interest rates? They would bring them down. They would do whatever it takes. I do believe personally that they would probably go in and start to buy stocks, most specifically with the ETFs. And they would do this and they would love it. They would love doing it. Of course, BlackRock would be in there buying up everything and anything. And then you would also also have an expansion of, of all their different programs and so on. This is a complete distortion of what used to be an economy and what used to be a market. And now it's all just a video game. 
This article here is talking about the Federal Reserve, it's talking about the economy, Jerome Powell, there's all kinds of stuff in here, but it begins with the bankruptcies. They mention the worries about a much bigger wave of bankruptcies beyond the handful of retailers that have sought to restructure through the US process known as Chapter 11. They pumped in the stimulus money in the rate of three trillion dollars and more is coming that postponed the bankruptcies it bought time as they say here but it's not enough to actually resolve the problem apparently there will be casualties in other sectors including travel leisure real estate energy and more that haven't surfaced yet even jerome powell expects a wave of bankruptcies that could cause lasting harm to the world's largest economy and said that more fiscal support may be needed to prevent the devastation despite the massive cost. So of course, just a few months ago, he was saying the amount of debt out there is extremely bad. We need to rein this in. We need to do what we have to, to watch out the deficits are bad, the debt is bad, get this handled. And immediately does 180 and said, just print as much as needed, go into the deficit, do whatever you gotta do. He also said, we can make loans to solvent businesses but caution that the passage of time is all that is needed for a liquidity problem to turn into a solvency problem. All the financial institutions and many corporations, if they were actually using generally accepted accounting principles, would actually be considered insolvent. But we're not allowed to talk about that because that's pessimistic. Look at what's happening, particularly to people with lower incomes. This is coming from a report of the Federal Reserve. And I think this is Market Watch, where they're basically just quoting one little part. On one hand, lower income people are getting slammed. Nearly 40% of those with a household income below 40,000 reported a job loss in March. That's almost half of the people in this category. They got booted. Now they might get back in. They're going to get their job back. But come on, we know that this V-shaped recovery is not going to happen. So what does that mean for jobs? It's not going to become the same direction as this fictional V-shape. No, it's going to be, yes, we can have three out of the 10 people back this week and we will call you when we can. Who knows when that will be? How long will their unemployment be able to pay them for? We've got serious problems here that are not being addressed and cannot be addressed by an increase in the amount of deficit debt and money printing. This is the report right here. If you're interested, you could check it out. It's directly from the Federal Reserve's own website. Hertz cancels new car orders as we have a shutdown in travel. And this is one company that acts as a bellwether in a particular way. This has been huge because we've seen the cars pile up and that's not a good thing for the automotive industry. I've been breaking it all down and now we have some more information related to that. As Hertz works to stay out of bankruptcy, the company has canceled 90% of new car purchases for the 2020 model year. Automakers are just unable to survive at this point. I think it's pretty clear. Spending and deficits set all-time records. Feds spent $3.3 trillion through April while running a $1.48 trillion deficit. At this point, nobody even cares. In fact, they're cheering them on, which is the worst part of this all. Here's the chart that corresponds to that, and you can see what's happening, and they're just going to go further and further. This is nothing compared to what we will see. But look around the world. All countries are doing the same thing. This is the fiscal stimulus as a percentage of the GDP. Japan is just off the charts, but right behind it, we've got the US, Australia, Canada, and so on. The world's largest container line is bracing for a historic slump in demand after emergency lockdowns across the globe left international trade in tatters. The fallout will drive volumes down as much as 25% this quarter. Shipping is definitely taking a hit right now. We've got some serious problems in this particular industry and we could see it in all different types, whether it's on the sea, whether it's on land or on air, any of them are really hurting right now. 
And last but not least, farmers planting mountain of U.S. corn as prices collapse. This is one area that is definitely having a big issue because they have these harvests. We've seen what's happening with the different types of farming. And I've noticed a lot of this food has really gone to waste, which is quite sad in what they've been doing. The preparation for a third round of bailouts. I'm not sure. I didn't get any details on if they received it already but the farmers had been expecting a third round and it was said that they were going to get it but I never pulled up any data on that so I've got to look into it further and bring it to you if I can but regardless it goes to the big farmers the agribusinesses it does not go to the little farmer they'll be wiped out just like the small business is getting wiped out right now in general all according to plan that's all for this video. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you do, you are supporting me. I want to thank you for that. Just by clicking one button, that's how you can help me out. So please do. If you want to check me out on Instagram, on Twitter, I create content for those every single day. You definitely want to check me out at The Money GPS. If you want to learn how to sell online, I've got a free e-course, 100% free e-course for you, the AmazonGPS.com. If you want to understand the financial system, well, then you've got to read. The only way to learn is that you have to read and read and read, understand the history, break down all the jargon. But if you read these two books, it's simplified for you in the way that I do my videos. Super simple, easy to bring in, easy to understand. Check them out at the link in the description if you want the audiobook, themoneygps.com. The Big Short 2 is so critical to understand right now because this could be the linchpin. This could be the next housing crisis. Very few people watch this video. Will you be one of them? Click it. I'll see you there.